create our own franchisee. Um, all these brands are best dominated. Why not to sell these franchises to Goras now? So fortunately, uh, with the God gates, with the help of our customers and uh, the clients, we are able to crack that and we are selling it to the Dubai. We have already uh, sold it in Dubai, Muscat, Nepal, and we have recently in corporate company in UK, US, and Canada. We have sold out almost all Canada franchisee. So this is what we do. Thanks, thanks, Anjali. So, uh, Ambi, uh, little bit about your how your entrepreneurial journey started and where were you earlier and what are you doing now? Namaskar. So, uh, thank you, everyone. So, how uh, we started was so I used to uh, work for this company called Zoho. I'm pretty sure a lot of people uh, here would be aware of this company called Zoho. So while I was recruiting for a position, uh, 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 UI and UX, so it's a very niche skill of designing uh, uh, for a software. So I actually happened to uh, uh, interview uh, someone, uh, and then I actually got to know he's from a very small city somewhere, uh, even further down from Madurai. And then he was actually working for a company somewhere here in the vicinity and he was making around like 6,500 rupees a month. So this was like a huge uh, moment for me where I realized that there is talent everywhere, but opportunity is not. So then from that moment, uh, then slowly a lot of things, uh, th that was just like a spark. And then after uh, that, uh, I had that moment, after that 14 uh, months later, I actually uh, decided, okay, now is a good time to start a cutting edge uh, technology company. What it does is, so are there any, uh, so I'm sure a lot of entrepreneurs in the room, and then every time they launch a business, the first thing they have to do is buy a lot of ads for reach. So if there is a very contrarian take, and then if you don't have to buy ads, but still grow at a steady pace, then you can use Gozen's tool. So it's about content marketing and all that. So now to build this uh, software, usually people say you have to go to Bangalore, stay here in Chennai, or go all the way to Silicon Valley. And then what we decided was, so I have a co-founder called Rahul. So, uh, so both of us decided that let's move to where our roots is, and then uh, we'll not raise any outside funding. So whatever revenue that we have made. So we've been in existence only for 14 months. We are not a big company, we're a very, very small company. We less than 40 people work there. So in the, uh, so whatever, in, but what we have done is, in the last 14 months, we have, uh, uh, we have created value, which is more than half a million dollar in sales. And then we sell to 37 different countries, all from Kwaimatur. We do it from Kwaimatur. We don't, we, uh, uh, we, uh, and 90% uh, of all of our staff are from uh, small cities, small villages, and then you'll be very, very surprised there is so much exciting talent. And then now after we announced, we see people moving from very high paying jobs, places like Singapore from the US, now they are coming to uh, Coimbatore, and then, so the only way you can do reverse urbanization is also through capitalism. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Andy. Thank you, thank you, Andy. So, okay, so um, uh, I'm in my final year in IM Lucknow. So after I finish my course, I think I can either, either join Anubhav or I can join uh, Ambi. I have a job opportunity right away with me. Okay. Um, you, you, you put both of us in a spot. Yeah. So there are a lot of other youngsters who would like to, you know, be in their hometown, still contribute towards, uh, you know, a big IT firm or a, a small level, or they would like to inspire from you and do something on their own. Uh, the core is to, uh, Anubhav is, uh, you know, anchored in indoor, if I'm not wrong, right? You're anchored in indoor. So he does not want to move out of indoor. Abhi unka chevaji ka flight hai na? So he's, Immediately after this, he's going to go back to Indoor. So both of them, the unique proportion, what they have is they want to be with their roots and want to do everything from their home. Um, so it's a very good inspiration what uh, we says and the poem which I quote from Bharati. Bharati says, Indians 
let's do all of this and you two are such indians on the stage with us so tell us uh, the initial challenge what you have in initial any entrepreneurial journey you take the first challenge what you have is uh, finance managing finance is a very uh, you know crucial thing in any entrepreneurial venture or or if you are at a level where you get to see it and make it profitable break even and then profitable so what was your uh, challenge in terms of financial uh, management anubhav and um. so um so obviously finance is one of the biggest challenge what every startup faces so my uh, challenge was uh, finance come family challenge because i didn't told my family about it so i didn't have money so uh, but uh, my bachpan ka dost had good money so he invested 3 lakh rupees some but in 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 a bootstrap a uh, company uh, you don't need to learn uh the finance very much the reason being because if you are bootstrap you have to save money otherwise you gone so um my mom used to say when i was very small i used to spend money so he said uh, she, she used to say uh, this is your father's money that's why you're spending whenever you you're going to earn you will realize how uh, difficult it is to uh, you know spend this money so it is really difficult uh, you know um it's very difficult i we bootstrap startup saves money everywhere everywhere i mean we uh, i made be valued 150 crore crore company still i use the second hand uh, second hand car second hand swift car reason being it's uh, we learned from the journey that you have to save money and uh, you have to be profitable otherwise nobody is going to come and if you take the funding your um management uh, power your your vision uh, might dilute so yes and gradually we learn the finance also with the help of the cas with the help of the experts with the help of the um, you know the seniors those who are doing uh, well in the ecosystem so um as the startup you uh, initially you have to save and invest money wisely to survive that is the survival instinct of every startup every bootstrap startup i think thank you so in a way i consider you richer because you are driving a second hand shift i'm still using my college bike so it's fine so yeah so um see whenever we talk about like financial models in startups and all that right these are all very interesting things so the moment you say startup they say okay what is your uh, uh, cash flow what is your cac to ltv ratio the problem is all these things kind of like go ahead and then make startup an entrepreneurship very complex so one thing what anubhav keeps saying and i really like it is like just do it man like don't think too much just do it and then you'll see how things go from there so and another thing is they talk about silicon valley models and then uh, they'll talk about the princeton model of uh, cash flow and there is also the harvard stanford model of cash flow but nobody talks about our amma model of cash flow which is so i learned today right so uh, we have been in a gozen as a company has been in existence for like 14 months not more than that so uh, and whatever startup finance lessons that i have implemented i have learned it from my mother okay so she taught me the first and foremost thing right so what we have done is we have very early we have decided that we'll take zero venture funding so completely bootstrap and what we value is the freedom of what we want to work on who we want to work with and at what pace we are we value freedom than anything else so that so that actually came from my mother so very early she used to say the moment you own money to somebody that person also owns your mind so don't do it so we are not taking any external funding so we are growing but at the same time it's fully bootstrapped and all that so what we do is we try to be very frugal we spend at the right places you point out any funded startup and then say this company is giving a uh, perk let's say like a uh, fancy laptop or like uh, uh, like uh, uh, let's say uh, free food on campus snacks on campus cabs and everything 
goes and does every single one of it. But what we do is we do not spend the money that we do not earn. Okay, that's what we do. Yes. So that is our simple finance principle that I would say. I'm coming there. I'm coming to people. Uh, so the business idea, the, the finance is usually people challenge challenges what they have in doing it. Then coming, you know, uh, towards having like-minded people who will believe in your idea, who will uh, who will put their heart and soul towards it and work towards it. And I think uh, Anubhav should have. Uh, you have uh, around 400 plus franchises across the country. I think Ambi has uh, serves his product in 35 plus, uh, 37 plus countries. His uh, model is over 37 countries. His tool is used in 37 countries. Ambi has you know around 400 plus franchises across the country, and of course he said some other countries also now. Um, how was your uh, you know journey at the initial phase in attracting like-minded people? to work towards the idea what you had, which you believe ki this will work, this can make a larger impact. And from there going to the next level, one in terms of partners, two in terms of employees. Since you are a bootstrap firm, you would have would have had hiccups in paying salary or you know, having, you know, it now it's a fashion statement to have a Mac in your hand. There are companies that gives Mac the moment you join they'll give you a Mac or an iPad or an iPhone, latest iPhone and you get to refresh it every two years. And the expectation of the current Zoomers, I would call them Zoomers, including myself, is very high when they join a firm. So how did you manage the people component, the team component, uh, you know, when you started growing? Okay, that's an interesting question. See, the, I operate under a very fundamental philosophy that you only attract the people that you already are. So you cannot like create uh, anything new or fake it until you make it. Silicon Valley has this thing, right? So they'll say, fake it until you make it, right? Don't do it at all, it's, it's toxic. So see, the, the biggest problem here with any startup is, like you asked, right? You, the moment they say we need, let's say, uh, goes and does a lot of AI work, artificial intelligence work. In fact, you'll be very surprised. Uh, one of our products, content.ai, uh, so it launched in the US Nine days ago, we already have about 500 plus paying customers, not users, paying customers, right? So the idea here is very simple. The, we keep looking for talent in the cities, okay? And then there are so many people who are curious, they are hungry for uh, opportunity. As a founder, you need to move your life to the place. Understand what is his life, what is his politics, what is him, what is, are his aspirations? For a, for a person here, buying a MacBook, buying a car might be an aspiration. But for him, making his mother happy, making his father happy, seeing them live a respectful life probably could be the biggest uh, aspiration for him. So then you have to actually go to, the, uh, go to such places and then understand even recruiting itself is very, very different. We know, so for all the product and value that we have done, uh, our highest experience that goes in is three years. So that's the highest experience we have. So, but most, the average age group is around 23 to 24. So all of them come from villages. So what we did was we started going to colleges that are in villages and then we took the top people from there. And you'll be very surprised there are like in every college, there are at least two really good, extremely really good programmers but as a founder, do we have the patience to go and seek them out? So that's the thing. It's painful initially. Then once we get to critical mass, like 20 people, 25 people, and this guy says, okay, I have a friend who's very, very good. Can I refer him inside the company? And then it's, it spreads very, very easily. And you'll be very surprised. Getting to 100 people is the difficult thing. And, and, and each one, like in product, they say viral quotient, right? For every one user you add, how many new users can you add? Right? Purely, it's math from there. So, it is, culture is very fundamental. You keep the culture very vibrant. You keep the uh, founders has to be very rooted in their culture. So, and put people first everywhere. And the initial 10 people you have to seek from villages and tier two cities, the magic will happen. It's happening for us. Thank you. So, in our case, um all the ground staff, those who are working in Chaya Sutta Bar, um, 
mostly are orphan, disabled, or very economically poor. There are only three sections we employ for. So around 2,500 people, um, out of which thousands are orphan. So the first uh, employee which we had uh, is Mr. Manoj. He's orphan. So what he used to do is um, initially he used he was in the job. Uh, he used to do job for a dentist where he used to you know uh, swipe and wipe and he used to jot down the numbers and the name of the patients. So we called him uh, that come and work along. So, But we were not able to pay him salary for the first two months. So we said, we promised him. So one thing is very important, that is vision alignment. That what we are going to do, it has to be very clear from the very beginning. So we made that show that we are going to be the world's biggest Kullar Chai franchisee and which we are probably right now because we are selling around 6 lakh Kullar Chai in a single day. And uh, uh, coming back to the point about the human resource, so we, we made a promise uh, that we will not make our home unless you make it. So now he owns a home in Indore. So, uh, so giving uh, the testimony of what you promised to the other employees is very important. Otherwise, because the retention is very uh, uh, volatile nowadays because people switch like anything. Um, so we, give, we have given them the vision, we have showcased them the, um, the profit in the terms of monetary and in the terms of you know, uh, respect you, uh, what you're going to get if you work in an organization. Uh, there is one more incident happened with me um, during COVID time. So there, there is one guy in our upper management. He's my, he's my, uh, my cousin's best friend. So he, he was like my brother to me. So what happened? At the COVID time, we decided we are going to pay salary to all these people, those who are working in, uh, in the lower strata. Because if we are not going to give them salary, how they are going to survive? So we started cutting salary from the upper strata. So he used to fall in the upper strata. So what he did, he merged with few people in the offices. He broke down the team and he merged with the competitor. And uh, I felt so bad that th th there is a negative cash flow going on. Uh, all the shops are shut and we have to pay the rentals. Now what? And he, at, at this very moment, he broke down the team and he merged with the competitor. Now what? So we worked really hard at that time and we realized that along with the emotion you have to keep the papers in check. So the, along with the monetary benefit, emotional benefit and the paper benefit you have to show them and you have to take that opportunity. And um, after that uh, we opened our uh, laptop when the shop shutters were going down. So the digital marketing helped us and uh, they, they, from there we started uh, gathering the people and at that time we have given the internship from, from the, all the IITs and IIM including the Oxford University students. So this is how it worked. Good. It was a very nice uh, part of it to hear about how people believe in your vision and join and you know, it, since it's bootstrapping you might not even pay them for quite, quite some months or something. Now uh, please do enlighten everybody. Please do enlighten everybody about uh, how was your initial phase in terms of marketing your idea. So whatever you have shared so far would have kindled some people in terms of how to believe in your idea, core idea, how to go about it and of course about the finances. Uh, how were you able to market your idea and you know make believe, trust or you know add more value to it. Of course, my brother will stay. I mean, uh, relative who would be interested, but beyond that, that's a first point. When I, I, I might go and tell the business idea to my father's friend or my neighbor or somebody in my, my classroom who might be interested, who might, you know, join along, tag along with me. But what were your efforts and how, what did you learn when you, when you wanted to grow bigger? Uh, you know, what are the challenges did you have? How was it? See. Uh, initially, when we had started, so uh, here in software as a service, right? So they keep saying, like, there are a lot of entrepreneurs who wait to build the product and then they start marketing it. 
but what we did was while we were building the product itself we had actually built an audience over a period of time and then so on the our soft, uh, so instead of launching a full suit so we have kind of like uh, cut down each part and then launched it in parts and then we first launched one small piece of plugin outside like 10000 people downloaded it and then out of it a very small portion bought the tool so our fundamental uh, philosophy to marketing itself is before you ask for the sale give something of value to the person and then then we ask for the sale so we give them like free books and then how they can use something on their daily uh, life or learn something new without buying the software itself so we focus on educational content we wrote a lot of blogs we, uh, we we bought in a lot uh, we, we bought in a lot of free plugins that we used for distribution sorry i don't want to get very technical so uh, so what so what we did was then we got a huge audience built over uh, 12 months and then we launched it we were able to really uh, uh, take off from that sale so the idea has been a very indian way of doing business not to be very pushy with the sale but give value and the money will come automatically so uh, um our startup story is filled with the marketing tactics so uh, the name itself was very ajeeb you know chai sutta bar and the placement where we opened it was near to the girls hostel so why near to the girls hostel because we thought if we are able to tap the girls crowd boys crowd will automatically fall in <laughs> and uh, as i said uh, i was in the boys hostel so i have so many friends from the very beginning so how we used we i call them that all the people come here there is a free tea for everyone so there is a dummy crowd the people saw it and assumed that my god this shop is running so beautifully what, what is the product that we must see so we got the exposure of the product thirdly me and my partner used to go in the events like this and uh, talk to each other while going out uh, that we heard that chai sutta was telling yummy tea bro let's go to each other so it inculcated the curiosity in the people's mind that what is this chai sutta bar let's go then it comes uh, our play that we have to retain our customer and we have to serve this and uh, this is how we did and uh, when it comes to the uh, cross borders um, made with dubai when we started in dubai it was damn stringent none from our forefathers have ever been to uh, any of the country they just fought with the foreigners <laughs> they never been to any of the foreign country so when uh, we got the chance to open one in dubai it was damn strange we didn't knew that we used to have three nights for even the vegetarian stuff damn strange so there there is one guy he asked me uh, uh, you are able to run in india how you going to do it here in dubai because he he has the motherly feeling of dubai because he was there from last decade so i said how many uh, what is the population of dubai he said uh, 20 lakh so i said it's very small it, it is like uh, jabalpur's population so we made it and i went to each and every even the kitty parties i have attended of the bangladeshis pakistanis uh, indians filipinos and we made it big and from one outlet to two outlet now three outlet now we are opening four outlet in dubai so this is how we worked so uh, so far what we have done is we have only spoken about the rosy side of a business how an entrepreneur grows what challenges he faces and stuff like that uh, we will close this with this part uh, what were all the negative stuff that were you know thrown at you or were you not were you very fortunate enough you didn't have any negative stuff to it yourself how did you overcome it because uh, you know that's very important mentally to be you know attached being anchored and you know going forward so there are n number of negative uh, i mean you cannot say k okay, um, see by the definition entrepreneurship is a something you have to challenge and you have to be problem solving you cannot cry and uh, say that uh, 
unless until you make it nobody is going to hear your startup story your success story you have to make it so there are a number of challenges see if i will i will start telling about the problem we faced it will be i missed my flight so um, to to give you a brief of all uh, let me address because there are young students i can see sitting here so what happened uh, um, we are the youngest company in india who been uh, i mean jiske paas do ba narcotics se chape pade so uh, one about my personal life which i do not say much in public but let me address it because i have everything was going very beautiful in my life we uh, were earning good uh, people were taking the selfies everything was going really good but a year and a half year back i have been diagnosed with type 1 diabetes it's a uh, Uh, it's a disorder basically which cannot be cured the only treatment is that you have to take insulin injection whenever you eat so when i started doing it i touched coma twice uh, because sugars go down so you uh, might touch coma so it was a shock for my parents and for my family for me as a whole and uh, it was so much i, I just went uh, to depression my hair i was losing i was started losing my hair so at that time i realized what helped me i was coming to the point what helped me is my vision that i was wearing a invisible jersey written india in it and we have to sell chai to every single nation that helped me and uh, i grew up and from um, i have been diagnosed with 16.4 hbuc which is very dangerous and currently a minus 5.5 and i gained my weight also <laughs> so for on entrepreneur every day is a challenge and you have to enjoy it and you have to solve that it and you have to address that people so that people can also become the entrepreneur like you thank you thank you see with the sa with the software thing it's slightly different so i had uh, chal- when we say challenge it's primarily you are here in india and also in a tier 2 city like coimbatore and you are talking about artificial intelligence you are talking about doing cutting edge technology and then 99% of the people who you talk to think that you are mad so but at the same time like he said right so if you need motivation as an entrepreneur then probably we should not try entrepreneurship so motivation is intrinsic for any entrepreneur so there are, there are like multiple things like people will say don't bootstrap uh, it cannot be done at all Uh, tier 2 tier 3 talent is not good so you're going to waste why would you leave your high paying corporate job and come here and all that but one thing during that time there was a huge personal realization where a lot of this constructs that we have is based on a very westernized thinking of what we call most of you would know here it is methodological individualism where everything seems to be focused on the individual making the individual look good making the individual look better that's where we are not satisfied with the iphone 13 we want the iphone 18 or 19 whenever it comes out but when we look at a very indian way of doing business that is when whenever there was uh, when we were setting up there are so much challenges on a daily basis uh, my mother stood, stood like a rock with me so that importance of family the importance of how much family took that stress away or having a family get together that we can where nothing went right and which is like every day in a startup he will agree so uh, having a family that uh, ha- a family get together and everything helped a lot so this way there, even though there are many negatives but given how we had set up uh, my uh, my family was very supportive so uh, i did not feel much of it i think we are doing pretty okay but family was the key that helped me go through all that very very interesting journey about ambi and anurag so we'll take two questions and we'll uh, close the session questions to ambi or then take the mic thank you firstly i want both of you to go much much bigger than what you are today 
So I am also having, uh, I hope no one from my company is here. <laughs> okay. So uh, I work in a... There is a live stream. Okay, that's fine. Uh, at least I am facing... Okay. Oh, you have to go back. <laughs> so uh, I have ideas about uh, uh, at least doing what I like from my hometown, uh, which is in the food industry. So uh, it might uh, uh, appeal to you. So I, I want to start something with food industry because my family has been doing a lot in the food industry. And I don't want to leave my job because it is very lucrative. It gives me uh, nice uh, perks like uh, nice laptops, good salary. <laughs> but yeah, I, I want both of you to go to a state in which you can give nice laptops to your own employees. So that is one state. We are already giving. Oh, okay, nice. So how do you? Uh, do this actually. How do you? Uh, how do you even do this without uh, being too afraid or anything? Yeah, thank you. See, you don't have to be afraid. Uh, you have to be courageous enough if you want to pursue entrepreneurship. You have to be very much. You have to be courageous enough. Um, as far as the FNB, any product is concerned, um, first of all, do not fall in love with your product. Uh, leave it open for the criticism. For example, I do not like tea, nor I drink it, but I sell it because <laughs> because people like it. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. I mean, it's true. Uh, I say the fact because people need to know this. Uh, uh, so first of all, leave your product for the criticism for the people, and do the rectification according to the feedback you get. Whatever the product you have. You have to do this first. And secondly, leave it for the society and let the feedback come from the society. Start with the prototype and start now. Whatever the inputs you have, go with it. Do it right now. Do it. No, there, there is only one guru in the market. My fundas and his funda is not going to work in your uh, company. There is only one guru in the market, that is market himself. Jump into the market, market will teach you everything. I don't have any question, but I just wanted to compliment the Chaiwala. Roman Andri, sir. So, uh, so there'll be the last question. We have one more question. Yeah, this is my question to Shrampi Murthy. As he was, as the Chaiwala told about uh, a guru in marketing, I want to know about your. Guru and mentor. Thank you. So, I think most people might not know him, but most people might know the company. Everybody talks about Zoho, they think about the Sridhar Vembu, but actually there's another Vembu called Mani Vembu. Oh, so, he is my guru and mentor. So, uh, probably you have to read about him. He will not come outside, you will not see him at all. Uh, so, Mani is my mentor. So, he is like the modern day living barbiar. He actually taught me Sai Vadai Tunindu Sai. So he said, and that, uh, that was the fundamental premises of Gozen. So if you get me started on money, I'll go on for another 30 minutes, but read about him, no? So he prefer he keeps a very low key, but he is my Manasiga Guru. Yeah. Thank you. Rightly said, you can't find any information about money Vembu. It is, uh, you know, rarely found anywhere in the social media. Thank you, gentlemen, both of you. It was a very, very interesting concept. And the most important key take-home value is that I learned finance from my mother. That's what both of you said. There is a very old Tamil movie song, Kashtapattu Seta Panatha Amma Kaiyila Kuduttu Poode Sella Kanna Avanga Aara Noora Aki Poodu Vanga Sella Kanna But you guys followed what your mother used as a plan to manage home finance to, and you took it to the business. That's fantastic. 
And always my guru and mentor says that you don't have to learn from the Caucasian population, learn from home. And here are the living examples to see how we can learn from home and we can stand on the home ground and take it to the 